Welcome. This is the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Let's look at our agenda for today and off we go. Okay, so we've got attendees. So October 14 Hacktoberfest review is one topic for my list. Uh, progress on the uh, Jenkins.io pull requests. And Vlad, if you're okay with it, I'd like to talk about the Docker image uh, changes to use uh, the official image. Because I think this would be a good time for us to talk through that and identify mm -hmm. what we can do, etc. Yeah. Great. Anything else we should put on the agenda? I'm not sure if this is related to the last subject, but uh, just proposal. Uh, I was thinking about including inside uh, tutorials uh, chapter or book or section on Jenkins.io. Uh, Catacoda interactive tutorials, something that Kubernetes does on their side. They include Kubernetes interactive tutorials in their tutorial section. And I have the link which I can point to <laughs> something. It is related to Docker, what I found, and it is kind of interesting. And I can Great. Would, and would you be willing to show us a demonstration? Is there that? I would, I would love to see that. I would love to know more about it. So if we do I, that, then we would have to, but the, can we fund Katakoda to, or, or in our sites to run those web, those demos? See, I, I assume so. Topic has been added, Vlad. Fair enough, and we'll we'll yes. get there because I think I think what Vlad's suggesting may be something that Katakota is willing to fund themselves. If oh. they're doing it for Kubernetes, if they're doing it for Kubernetes, they're probably oh. doing it for in some way for open source programs. Then. Right, which would make sense. How lovely. Well. Maybe I'm not understanding the topic of discussion, but what I found is uh, Kubernetes is including Karakoda interactive tutorials in their tutorials of Kubernetes. And I'm not sure who prepared those interactive tutorials. I found interactive tutorial for uh, Jenkins and Docker on Katakoda side, I think on Katakoda. And so my proposal is about including those tutorial, interactive tutorial, which is kind of nice. It shows how things can be done in our um, tutorial section. Um, I'm not sure if section is the right term here on Jenkins.io side. We have tutorials kind of uh, So you're talking about using existing chip. materials? Right, using exist. Well, first of all, expanding our Jenkins.io documentation, and maybe we'll need to modify or add. This is about Docker and Jenkins. Right. Maybe we can do similar about uh, Jenkins and Kubernetes, uh, and so, on. or whatever. Yeah, whatever the topic will be. Good. Very good. All right. I like that. Great topic. So. That's that's very interesting. Yes. Okay. Any other topics we need to put on the agenda? Okay. Then let's let's go ahead. So we're going to start through the topic. So Hacktoberfest webinar. We had approximately 20 attendees, attendees at the webinar. Well done, Vlad, well done, Jonathan, both on great material, good presentations, more presenters and good topics. I've reused a subset of the topics, reused one of the topics 
for a separate post. Uh, it was the thing about migrating a plugin. And we've got an interest from Zinab Abubakar in the building Jenkins.io. But she wants to do it on Windows with WSL1. Mm -hmm. And that's because she can't, apparently she can't get WSL2 on her Windows computer. And she's been actively developing, but would like to be able to run the site so that she can see how it looks. By the way, Mark, just, just to add to our morning session, I confirmed that on my Windows box, it is WSL2 installed. Good, very good. That's and that's what I've got. So, but I'm confident I've got. Mark has one, at least one older computer that may still have WSL one. We can use for a test. Now, in terms of any any feedback you want to offer there? Any observations, Vlad, on things that we should do better or differently? Um, for webinar, I think it is there. Thank you very much for uh, preparing the slides and wonderful kind of uh, navigation point of what needs to be done. Thank you. Good. Well, and, and I thought that the demo transition, the transition to your demo worked smoothly and well. We didn't have any screen sharing failures or problems that way. Good, okay. Excellent. Okay, shall we take the next topic? So progress on the pull requests, right now we've got, let's take a look at what we've actually got. <laughs> we've got 130 open issues and 35 open pull requests. We had an outage today with the ci.jenkins.io uh, build processes were broken as a result of a change that was made earlier today in an image definition. So I've had to work around that, but I think Things are reasonably stable there and we're making progress. If we look at closed good first issues, let's see how we're doing there. Okay, good first issue. Oh, and instead of closed, that is not what I expected. Sorry. Yes, you are, you are in pull requests, not in issues. Oh, oh, thank you. That's the problem. Thank you very much. That's, yeah, I would have had to look for a different thing there. So let's look at the label, good first issues. There, okay. Good first issue, we've got 31 open and 44 closed. I can know that that 31 open. Good first issue PRs, 44 closed. And I think that's a net improvement from our last time. Yeah, we're down 30, we're down five issues less and that's good, excellent. We've certainly got quite a number yet to review and it'll just need some time for us to review them. Any comments or concerns on progress on Jenkins IO pull requests? Are you finding that the quality is generally good? Well, we made, that's a good question. How is the quality of the pull request? Um, it's been mixed, uh, but easy to handle. Uh, mixed quality, but easy to handle. Um, low quality items. So we had, for instance, uh, the, the St. Petersburg 
uh, Jenkins area meetup had an online session on Saturday and spent six or eight hours with about 10 people working together on it. Oh. And we got it, we received several good pull requests from that. We've received pull requests from other contributors and it hasn't been nearly the quality of pull requests has not been nearly the issue for us that it apparently was for some other projects. Huh. Have, have the benefit that we did an awful lot of work to prepare good first issues. All they had to do was read our directions, follow them, and and they could produce a useful pull request. Right. And is there any metrics to measure the quality of pull requests? Well, that's a good question. There is not, but we could certainly metrics to identify a rejected pull requests. And that's a good one. I don't I don't have that, although I could have labeled them. And that would have made it, you know, it was, I think we've had maybe four or five that we rejected in total. So for a month's worth of work, it's, it's hardly worth even flagging them as an issue because we get, we get one or two a month, whether when we're not even in a Hacktoberfest, right? There will be people who will demonstrate something to a friend who look, here's how you do a pull request and it's complete junk. So right now, metrics, I guess, is not uh, is not numeral, but it is kind of merged, uh, right. admitted, kind of rejected. Right. Yeah. So we and we we should be able to gather, should be able to collect uh, metrics on at least approximations on Hacktoberfest commits that were merged. Ours merged. I'm not sure that I will trust them as entirely accurate, but but we'll have to look and see. It's a good one that as we are preparing a blog post, blog post for for the end of Hacktoberfest, we'll want some data, and I haven't done much to gather that data, so that'd be a good thing to be be watching for. E letter B on my keyboard is not working. Okay. Anything else on on Jenkins IO pull requests? Okay, let's get to the next one. This is the one that I'm most interested in. Oops. So Docker changes to use the official image. So Vlad has done marvelous work on getting us ready. We're in progress, whoops, in progress with the change now, right? Some of the, some changes have already been made, made. And then we had a comment from, we had insights from Matt Sicker the on the technique he used. And Vlad, if I understand correctly, what he did was he was using command line Docker inside inside the image, but it was calling a Docker in Docker image rather than calling a Docker in Docker daemon, rather than calling the Docker daemon on the host operating system. So what I think he was doing is he created this sacrificial um, Docker image that's used to allow it to run Docker and Docker. And our current image uses, runs as root and does not use the Docker and Docker daemon. Did I get that about right, Vlad? I think you got it right, but uh, uh, I need to uh, like uh, arrange all this knowledge. I'm trying to do this through different links. I uh, created my personal uh, uh, site on GitHub where I'm referencing all 
well, topics, discussions, and everything related to uh, using Jenkins and Docker um, and how to properly use uh, declarative pipelines, including discussions that you had on GitHub, Mark, I point into that, including our previous conversations. So maybe at some point of time, we can sum it up. Um, um, but I guess you stated it correctly. Uh, my understanding that what uh, we want to do is to use a Docker daemon, which is already installed on the host machine when calling uh, declarative pipelines. But again, let's um, um, just I want to make sure that uh, my statement is correct. Uh, so. Um, yeah, so I think so. And I, again, this is me not being sure, but I I think right now, because we're running as root, we use the Docker and Docker, the Docker daemon on the host. Mm -hmm. And what Matt was saying is that he recommends using the Docker in, instead of using the Docker daemon on the host, we create a separate separate Docker image that's running, and it uses it provides the Docker daemon for the for the the actual image in use. But hmm. that's great that you're working on the issue and investigating it. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Do you want to share with us the link to your GitHub repository? Uh, link to my GitHub repository. Yeah. Uh, oh, to uh, 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 something that I was doing, like providing references to all this. Yes, it is V Silverman. Uh, G, uh, Google sees no dogs. G S O D. Uh, yeah, that's it. It is okay. at the Great. time when I was preparing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So it's this. And it is just a file, I think. And and you're just you're capturing your your notes into that that repository. Super. Right. I was starting capturing this, but sometime when I was preparing for this, Google says no docs. Excellent. All right. So I think the marks. Guess is that the exist that the old that the previous technique from Matt Sicker will work without requiring Blue Ocean the Blue Ocean image Blue Ocean Docker image if we use Vlad's technique to install install Blue Ocean in a custom image. Built by the built by the reader, built by the, the student. Mm -hmm. It worked for me at least. I haven't worked through every demonstration yet though to prove it, but I think that would give us the best of both worlds. We could use we could have the safety of not having to run as root and have the the benefit of still being docker and docker and being able to run docker images with with the, all the convenience that we want So Mark ran the uh, Java with Maven tutorial successfully. I didn't run the Python or the NPM or the LabVIEW tutorial. And Python and NPM are the two that I think are most interesting here because they, they do something slightly different in each case to meet the needs of their particular tutorial. Mark and I uh, just briefly tried running not as root, and I was not successful in this. So I would be glad to um, grab uh, your experience in that and 
extending that or dropping it, whatever. Great, yeah, and I wonder, well, yeah, so let's, we, if we get to the end of our agenda time today, Vlad, you and I may take some time and we may want to just go through that and let's do the experiment together. We can just basically pair a program on my computer and try it to see, hey, can we make this work? Because it's, yeah. it's, yeah. all right. If your time allows, Mark, I would be glad to do that. Great. Anything else on Docker changes for the official image? Okay, Katakoda Interactive Tutorial. So this one, can you share that link either in the chat or in Gitter? I shared in the chat, Mark. Oh, you did, very good. Okay, so let me go find the chat. And it's here. Okay, so building Docker images using. So this is already hosted by them. They've already got something that shows how to do a very useful thing that we do. That's great, Vlad. Thank you. And I, I assume there's no charge to run that to run that environment. It just uh, works. I think so. Oh, that's great. Look at that. Mm -hmm. they, they're, so they're willing to host the, uh, the system. Well, you need to create account. And I guess I, I did create account there. But I haven't run this tutorial yet, but just. Mm -hmm. And uh, my idea was doing it similar. I posted another link in the chat room um of this session uh similar to what kubernetes is doing uh with their tutorial and they're doing exactly like this so for instance if you click i guess interactive tutorial or start scenario they open the similar window that's fascinating okay black light oh so they've got a, a banner that makes my life harder to deal with, but okay, that's great. Oh, that's amazing. So here I just. And I guess you don't need to type, you just click on this uh, mini cube version, for instance, it will type for you in this terminal window. Well, that's, that's lovely. Yes. Yeah, so if, if, if they, they would be willing to host such a thing from something we authored, that's great. Well, I guess we need to run, uh, to write scenarios. So to write these tutorials, create the content for this. Right. And Docker is just one of the topics. It can be with anything. Uh, Kubernetes or GitHub, if you wish, how to sync up repositories, for instance, and so on. So it is more related to tutorials, to teaching people how to do proper things. So you said, if I just click that, it will type that for me. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. And I can go full screen. Nice. That, that's exceptional. Okay. So then the and it is on, on GitHub. Yeah. So it is open so. So the Calicota tutorials are available or at least the, the Kubernetes ones are, are available on GitHub as source code? Uh, well, no, this site, Kubernetes uh, site is on GitHub. And I guess this theme is part of this Git, GitHub site. Oh, I, oh I see. Yes. I see what you're saying, right? I wasn't even thinking about it. I Now I look at it, I see up here, the URL is actually kubernetes.io. It's not katakoda.com. I so, guess if so you the, click edit this page, it will tell you exactly. 
right. it takes me to a to exactly their repository, which is inside mm -hmm. their website. It is somehow That's, embedded in your license. Right. So so that embedding would probably require us to negotiate something with with Katakoda to allow us to host it and allow allow them to host it and us to place it inside our page. Okay, so that that's good to know. We we'll likely need negotiation agreement with Katakoda that they would host. That, that would be a very interesting uh, project. Yeah, embedded in the Jenkins.io site. In case of success, I guess it will help us bring in more like, people and we can claim that it is not very hard to understand and to teach right. yourself Jenkins. And... Yeah, absolutely. So is this something that you're you're planning to continue investigating, Vlad? Uh, yes, I can. I would be glad to do this. That's, Hopefully that's, there will be some mutual benefit for everybody. Yeah, I would I would love to learn more uh, that Kata code is a fascinating piece of technology. That's great. Okay. So let's read it at Kubernetes.io site. The question was, shall we link to the to existing Jenkins and Docker tutorial? So that the existing tutorial was actually on the Katakota site, wasn't it? It was you had linked to I linked to Katakoda. Yeah, I was uh, today like looking around and searching for Docker because I was interested how well what people other people are saying about using Jenkins and Docker and starting. And mm -hmm. I found this tutorial, and uh, that is why I mentioned well maybe it's related to our previous topic in this discussion. And well, I I didn't run this tutorial yet by my. Uh, myself, but I found well they are using the same approach, starting Docker image as root, um, and I wonder well how they are doing. So it would be interesting for me also to explore it further and understand it. Yeah, very interesting. Okay. So it's like example of how exploring one topic brings us to the next topic and how we can continuously improve CI. Some people are calling it <laughs> continuous improvement. I like that. Very good. That's excellent. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to share on the Katakoda interactive tutorials? Um, no. I guess I have uh, somewhere on my GitHub account somewhere repository uh, exploring Katakoda tutorials, but uh, yeah, I need to look further and in case if there will be something valuable, I can share that. Super. And I think that covered the topics that we had on the initial agenda. If you'd like, we could try switching, switching to look at exploring Docker further to see if we can find a way to, to still do the tutorials, but not run as root by using the technique, combining your technique and Matt's technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would be glad. Okay, great. Let's try that then. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the recording for now, Vlad, so that 
the, the we don't have to worry about my being recorded as I make mistakes. Okay.